So when I decided to do the top 100 games I've ever played, I never thought I'd start here, but what a great game this was. Free via the Net Your Rousey demo disc service from the official PlayStation magazine. This was just a great deal of fun. I'd love to see what the developers ended up moving on to after Gravitation, but for anyone who never played it, it was... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. You control a little spaceship with crazy janky controls. It had a fun multiplayer mode. And me and my mates at the time had a great time with this, more than a lot of the games that were released from the period. A strange pick? Maybe so. But there's quite a few of them in this list, and there are no rules. This is my favourite 100 games of all time, and Gravitation swoops in for 100. Moving on to a game that was universally panned and got terrible reviews pretty much across the board. However, I know that a lot of us have this game in our hearts. Better than the movie, which was pretty terrible. The Phantom Menace game, it just had a bit of everything. Lots of different types of gameplay. It was incredibly hard pretty much throughout, which is crazy considering this was ostensibly a kid's game. But you can't beat it. Obi-Wan jumping across them toadstools in the Naboo jungle. What more do you want? And obviously this bit is very memorable because of the amount of times I restarted the game. Going through little tunnels and slicing up weird cleaning robots. A great game. Underrated. Ah, Fall Guys, the game of lockdown in my opinion. This will always be the game I'll associate with 2020 and that period when we first all got sent home from work and wondered what the hell was going on but you know this is a great game it's, it's pure fun from start to finish it was the perfect game for PlayStation Plus the perfect game for the situation we all found ourselves in and I still enjoy a blast every now and then it doesn't quite have the same appeal to me now it was very much a game of its time and place but I really do think Fall Guys is a terrific game with some fantastic modes and yeah love it Rage Racer, not a spelling mistake, the oddly titled third game in the Ridge Racer series on the PlayStation 1. In my opinion, the best of that range, I know a lot of people prefer Type 4. Rage Racer just had a very different feel, which probably stood up for the reason for its name. It was a lot moodier, it had a, a cool soundtrack that didn't really fit with the others, and yeah, it just had a very overcast look, as you can see in the clip that I'm showing here. It, it was just a different animal and the single player mode was absolutely superb I wasted hours on this on the PS1 absolutely love it one of my favorite racing games of all time Rage Racer Bloodstained Curse of the Moon when Bloodstained Ritual of the Night came out I think everyone expected that to be the game that would blow everyone away and, and a fine game it was but the free game for the Kickstarter backers, Kickstarter backers even, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, which was basically an 8-bit eight, eight version of, uh, of Bloodstained, very similar to the original NES Castlevania games, for me ended up topping Ritual of the Night. I think this game is absolutely terrific. I've played through it twice. Um, really, really fun game. Curse of the Moon 2 recently came out as well, which I've just picked up as well. And... Yeah, when I looked at all the games, this did sneak in, and I think it's a fantastic game. I highly recommend it. And then a bird tells her that she what a game Celeste is. This I think this won Game of the Year from quite a few uh, publications and websites in 2018, and rightly so. This this is a fantastic game. It's a triumph of gameplay. Anyone who's never played it, you, you absolutely have to. There is little you can say about this other than to say it is absolutely flawless it's got a fantastic storyline that's quite deep and surprising but for me it's all about the gameplay trying to catch all of the strawberries um it's just got endless replayability and it makes you really have to think about your surroundings and i love that type of kinetic gameplay a lot of skill required very trial and error and you will die thousands of times finishing the game Knights of the Old Republic, wow, what a game. 
I'm surprised I've not put it higher, but say la vie, really. Um, my favourite Star Wars game, I thought, but as it turned out, not, not to be the case, but it's certainly up there. And anyone who's played this all the way to completion can account for this, and I won't spoil it here. This has one of the best twists in any medium ever. Um, absolutely blew me away. I didn't see it signposted at all at the time. and Lord it, was... It's the game that always makes me wish that we get a third. Every time I think of Bioware, I just think, why aren't they putting a third out? Everyone wants it. Fantastic game. Now, this is a choice. Um, a lot of people from the very few who will watch this um, will question because this game is I think quite often regarded as one of the worst Zelda games ever made if not the but I absolutely love Phantom Hourglass I finished this from start to finish on a holiday in I think Barcelona about 10 years ago and yeah it just it was just a great time sat around the pool uh, some lovely puzzles I love the art style very Wind Waker-ish um, and it made good use of the DS touchpad and everything like that, and it, it's just a very underrated Zelda game, in my opinion, and I urge everybody to give it a go and not listen to the review scores. Mario Kart Wii. Now, again, possibly an odd pick. I don't think it's a particularly favoured um, Mario Kart game. However, this is a game for the time and place for me. One of my... In fact, my really my first job after university at uh, RBS, they had a Wii set up in the middle of the floor with Mario Kart, and, and this game dominated lunch times. I cannot even tell you the huge arguments that would happen and the bets that were won and lost. And it's a game close to my heart for that. Really, we we wasted hours on this and unlocked pretty much everything, every character, every course, etc. And yeah, a great game, fantastic gameplay. Uncharted 2, possibly one of the biggest upgrades on an original ever. Um, I loved Uncharted 1, I think most people did, but it, it, was, it was flawed. But Uncharted 2 was just exceptional. Um, from start to finish, this game felt like a Hollywood movie with production values to match. It's a spectacular game from Naughty Dog, and it, it was for me the game that really put them on the map as Sony's premier developer which they would go on to even improve upon with a game that may be further along the list. No spoilers. Brilliant game. Still the best Uncharted for me. I think 3 was also good, 4 was also good, but that's the best. Fantastic Dizzy. I got this for Christmas uh, shortly after I got my first games machine, which was the Sega Game Gear. And I don't know if you call this a role-playing game, there's not really much combat, so to speak, but it's more of an adventure game. You have to go around, pick up items, use them to solve puzzles, and it's just a very cute adventure. It's a game that I, I wasted hours on. I absolutely loved it. Um, I think this was put, on, put out on pretty much every platform of the era, but for me it was the Game Gear, and it's a game that um, I absolutely love. It's, it's very close to my heart. Um, I recently picked it up complete in box for an extortionate amount of money um, compared to what I probably sold it for back in the day. Dead Space. One of the best survival horror games ever made. Uh, probably the scariest. I'd go out on a limb and say. Um, I don't think anything could prepare you for how terrifying this game was at the time because it, it had no real hype behind it. But the atmosphere on the Ishimura, the ship that you're on as Isaac, is absolutely full of dread. Um, the necromorphs that stalk the corridors just never, ever cease to be terrifying. Uh, I'll never forget an arm of a necromorph appearing over the shoulder of my character from behind and yelping back in the day with my mates. Great game. Super Mario Land. The game I got with my Game Boy. Um, very easy, very simple. Um, but as I was a Sega kid, this was actually my first Mario game. I didn't have a, Mario, uh, a Nintendo machine until I got the N64. Um, 
I didn't grow up with a SNES or anything like that, so this was my first encounter with Mario, and I absolutely love it. Uh, it's a quick game, you can finish it in 40 minutes or so, but it's just great gameplay, lovely, memorable music, and the perfect game for the system. When you first buy it, I think most people got this. Sonic the Hedgehog 1, but not the Mega Drive version. This is the Game Gear or Master System version that I'm talking about here. And I absolutely love this. It's a very different game. It's got different zones, entirely different music, uh, and it's got a different feel to it. The gameplay is obviously similar, but it is different. Um, and it needs to be seen as a, a different game in its own right. It, it, it's, it's really good. I had it on the Game Gear as my first encounter with the Hedgehog, obviously. And I loved it. Uh, very difficult at the end if you were a little kid like I was. I remember Scrap Brain's uh, Scrap Brain Zone killing me numerous times. But yeah, a game full of nostalgia for me that I absolutely love. Crackdown, the first Xbox 360 game on the list, and one that I often think back and I think what. Did I love that more than I deserved to, or was it actually as good as I remember? And I'm pretty sure it was. This was a great game, um, open world shooter, and one of the things I loved about it was the collection aspect. There were lots of orbs placed around the city that you had to collect to uh, upgrade your your character. You were a superhero, so you had these crazy jumps, as you can see here. And the more of these orbs you got, the the higher you could jump. Eventually, you could basically jump all the way across the city. Pretty much, it, it was crazy. But a pure fun game. I know it's had a couple of sequels that haven't been as well received, but the original's a great game. Um, really good. The Pathless. The first next-gen game on the list, and it might well be the last, actually. Um, recently finished by me. What a spectacular game this is. Um, I don't know how well it's sold, but for me... You owe it to yourself to play this game. This is the best non-Zelda Zelda I've ever played. Some of the puzzles are ingenious. They all involve your bow and arrow and your, and your uh, eagle companion who flies you around the map. Uh, you know, hitting arrows off mirrors and lighting up flames to open doors, that type of thing. It's always quite simple, but it doesn't stop ever making you feel clever when you work it out. And it's just a great game from start to finish. Epic. Haley Wars on the Game Gear. Again, one of my very earliest games that I ever had, the first shoot em up I ever played. Uh, very basic, I suppose, when you look at it now, but this was a, a fantastic introduction to this genre for me as a kid, and it's again very close to my heart. Um, the music's very memorable. I hear it and I'm instantly transported back to being six or seven years old playing this game really good. I wasted countless batteries on my Game Gear with this. It's very basic, but you do get full upgrade system that you see in various games like R-Type, etc. So it, it's got a bit of everything. Another game you can finish relatively quickly. Classic for me. Klonoa. Daughter Phantom Isle on the PlayStation 1. I never owned this up until about two years ago when I bought it on uh, on eBay. Um, this was a game I rented very often from my local video store, Northern Video, which has been referenced before on the channel. Um, and yeah, I remember I had to rent it about three times before I finished it. Uh, just kept the save on my memory card. And yeah, this is just a, a great time from start to finish. If you love 2D side scrolls, obviously it's got that 2.5D aspect, it's very cute, but it's got some deep gameplay mechanics, you basically pick up enemies and throw them a bit like sort of mischief makers or tombi, that type of thing. Um, a fantastic game, I don't think the franchise is really uh, happening much anymore, I wish they'd bring it back. God of War. Some might be shocked how low this is, um, that's purely due to the strength of the rest of the games more than anything this did wrong, because this is a terrific game, absolutely brilliant, stunning production values, the acting from Kratos and boy is brilliant, 
it's it's brilliant. It's just brilliant. That is the word to use. Even looking at it now, you, you just think this is better looking than 90% of games that are coming out on the PlayStation 5 and, and Series X even now. It, it, it's stunning. You owe it to yourself to play this game and I don't think I'm alone in really looking forward to God of War Ragnarok. Hopefully at the end of this year, but uh, I won't hold my breath. Crazy Taxi. Is it time for some crazy fun? What a game. What a game. Perfect arcade conversion for the Sega Dreamcast. Offspring soundtrack. You can hear the game when you look at it in your head. It's just it's just like that. It was just pure kinetic fun. And the thing that stuck out for me was I was utterly addicted to this for about two to three weeks and then never played it again. It was one of them short burst games. You got it, you loved it, and then you realised there wasn't an awful lot more to it. But, but yeah, make no mistake, this was a fantastic game. One of the best uh, exclusives on the Dreamcast. Wipeout HD, uh, a game that I was absolutely addicted to, along with a couple of good friends of mine, constantly trying to beat Zico to get that trophy, which I don't think either myself or Sean ever did, despite about a billion attempts. But putting that aside, what a game! The soundtrack was stunning. I'll never forget that. Was it Machine Gun by Noisier? That was on in my ears pretty much non-stop for the year after this via mp3 but the, the game itself is just brilliant it's the best wipeout game ever made a series that desperately should come back for me on playstation 5 it's been far too long bring it back please i ummed and ard on putting this in here because it's not really a game is it PT it's uh, I mean it even stands for playable teaser it was a demo for the game that sadly got cancelled which would have become Silent Hills but I couldn't not include this because it's one of the most memorable gaming experiences I've ever had the night that this came out on the PlayStation Store I don't think I've ever been so scared in a via a game ever um, it, it was absolutely incredible. It were photorealistic graphics that, that still stun you now when you look at them. And Yeah, I mean, I'm a huge Silent Hill fan, and it's very dis disappointing what could have been with this, uh, with Norman Reedus involved, but here's hoping we get one soon. House of the Dead 2. One of my favourite games on the Dreamcast. I loved it in the arcade as well, but the Dreamcast is where I had it. Um, with the gun, of course great game you know incredibly cheesy uh, script and everything and it's just pure fun light gun games are a big miss for me I've always loved them and this was one of the best some great boss fights the music's really memorable everything about it, it it's just one of them premier games I think of when I think of the Dreamcast which was so good for its incredible arcade conversions that really really helped its library I think because it, it didn't get a lot of third party support as the years wore on but you could always rely on the arcade ports. I don't wanna die. My God. Tekken 3. Fantastic game. Um, I, c I could speak about this for hours but as it is I'm trying to stay to about 40 seconds a game so I'll keep it sweet. My, myself and my mate Dan over one summer I think learned about just about every combo and move that every character had uh, it utterly dominated our lives for a period of time um, unlocking everything all the crazy extra characters like Gon and Dr. Baskonovich and Tekken Force mode Tekken Bowling it was just one of them games that just had so much going on for you to unlock and um, much like Smash Brothers it just felt like a real big package you got so much value for money from Tekken and I don't think the series has ever been as good as Tekken 3. Portal. This game utterly blew me away. Um, the physics based puzzling is, is still incredible now really. It could blow your mind some of the stuff you were able to achieve with the gun. Such a clever game. But it didn't just rely on its puzzles and 
um, its ingenuity. It had a great story too, um, which of course, you know, the cake is a lie and all of that has become famous. But the whole story throughout, through you know, from the start to the finish of the game, uh, is just very, very clever. Um, another series that should return, Portal Two, was also fantastic, but I just think Portal One a bit more memorable to me, so that gets gets into the top 100. Rocket Knight Adventures, I loved this game. Absolutely loved it. Very difficult, actually. It probably doesn't look it in this video, but it was. Um, it was one of the best Konami games on the system for me. Uh, it was followed by a sequel, Sparkster, which for me wasn't quite as good, but yeah, great game. It, it has a look of like Metal Slug, doesn't it, when you, when you see it in movement. Really, really just fun, cute platformer. Um, and a series for me that deserves another look. I, I know it won't get that because Konami are arseholes, but yeah, great game, great fun, perfect kids adventure on the Sega Mega Drive. One of the first games I had on the system, as I recall. What a game. I've said that quite a few times. I'm going to keep saying it, aren't I, really? Because it's my best 100 games I've ever played. Pixel Junk Monsters. I would love to guess how many hours myself and my friend Sean Clement spent on this game. I would anticipate it probably be approaching 100. Um, for one summer, we attempted to get every single... I believe it was Black Flag, which was uh, for finishing a level without at any point having oh it was a rainbow sorry for finishing a level without anyone dying um and we yeah it was just great it's a fantastic game tower defense very clever cute looking art style uh, it was followed by a sequel a few years ago which wasn't as good sadly but this is a great game make no mistake the legend of zelda breath of the wild a lot of people will be shocked that a game of this scope majesty and you know, sort of renown is so not low. I mean, at the end of the day, I've probably put, I've probably played like five thousand games, and I've said it's the seventy third best I've ever played. So it's not bad, is it? But it's not, it's a great game. It's not quite as good as its reputation, in my opinion. But that doesn't discount from the fact that it's just such a clever game. It's it's one of those where every time I was going somewhere. En route, something would take my eye off my waypoint and make me actually just go, what's over there? And then go and I'd find myself on a two-hour advent adventure doing something else. Brilliant. So I had to include a FIFA. For the amount of hours that I've spent on the game, I thought, I have to, I have to put a FIFA on here. Um, and this was the best FIFA, in my opinion. That's all it is, just my opinion, because I know a lot of people are very staunch. Oh, this FIFA's better than the other... This was the one that I had the best time on, because um, me and a couple of my mates were well into pro clubs mode online on the PlayStation 4, and yeah, it was a great time. I mean, there were countless arguments, and we were pretty rubbish, really, all told, but we had a great time, and I just think the gameplay has just got steadily worse with FIFA. In fact, it gets worse every year, which is disappointing, um, but there we go. FIFA 14, loved it. Theme Hospital, um, pure fun and funny as well. That's the thing. The illnesses that the patients got in this game were were hilarious, like inflated head and all these other crazy illnesses that people got. You weren't dealing with, you know, cancer or anything like that in this. This was a comedy game, and I, I just think it was so inventive. I mean, I love management games in general, but this was one of my favourites. Um, I know Two Point Hospitals come out, which is obviously a sort of progression, a modernization of this, if you will. But you can't beat the original for me. This is a great game. Well worth seeking out if you like this type of thing. You'll have a great time with it. Rollo to the Rescue. A game where you play numerous different animals. You have to unlock them from cages, and then uh, that's that's what you have to do in a level basically you have to find your friends it's very kiddy very cutesy but i was a kid when i played this and it sticks in my head that the music is so memorable and 
yeah, it's just one of those that I utterly love. When I started retro collecting, it was one of the very first games I decided I had to pick up for that reason. And I can't wait to... It's one of them ones I can't wait to introduce to my daughter, you know? Um, it means a lot to me. Weird to say that, really, but I can't put my finger on it. This is one of the games I associate very much with my childhood and renting games from the video shop with, with my dad. And, yeah, I love this. Cuphead, from the sublime to the ridiculous, a great game. Look at the art style, stunning in fact. Um, I've had this on two platforms now, three if I include a hacked Switch, but I did have it on the Xbox One, I did buy it again on the PlayStation 4, because it's that good. Have I ever finished it? No I haven't. I can't get past the last boss, despite multiple, probably thousands of attempts. I don't think I ever will. That's not the point, it's, it is incredibly frustrating, but... You learn by dying. That's how, how you get better at this game. It, it, it rewards perseverance. Um, and the art is something to behold. You can just marvel looking at it. A real triumph of a game. Sonic Adventure. It was the game that blew me away in magazines when I first saw that the Dreamcast was coming. I'm, I'm a huge Sonic fanboy. I always have been. Team Sonic, not Mario for me, even though I love both. I grew up loving Sonic and, and seeing him in 3D, proper 3D, not the Sonic R or whatever on the Saturn, proper 3D was just mind-blowing. But the game itself, it has flaws. The camera's terrible. The, um, the voices of the characters are incredibly irritating. Put that aside, it's still a really fun game. I had a great time with it, the music's fantastic. And you can't help but love some of the levels. I mean, look at the sort of crazy stuff you could do. A great game. Grand Theft Auto. And no, this isn't building up to another GTA. This is the only GTA on my list because it's my favourite. I remember us all playing the demo relentlessly that had a two minute time limit of play and then later that day I had to go and buy it, simple as that, um, from playing the demo repeatedly because it was just that good. I never used to really play the missions, I'd generally just put the cheats in and go on a mass killing spree and see how long I could survive from the cops. And that was some of the most fun I ever had on my PlayStation 1, I absolutely adored it. There's just something about the top down view and I did actually love GTA 2 probably as much, but I thought I'd put this one on because I probably spent more time with it. Great game, and I'd love to see this remastered. I really would. Super Mario Odyssey. It's um, it's weird because I I look I look at Mario Odyssey and I loved it from the minute I got it to finishing it. I thought it was so inventive, so clever, so much fun. Um, but it doesn't seem to get the praise that it should from the wider gaming audience. I don't think it, people seem to say, oh, it's not as good as Mario 64. It's not as good as Sunshine or Galaxy. It's a great game, whichever way you look at it. That's the main thing. And I hope they do a sequel. Still one of the best experiences I've had on the Switch by a long, long way. Tetris. I mean, you must have guessed this would be here, right? It's probably on everyone's one, top 100 games ever list, I would imagine. Because everyone's had it in some format or another. But I'm going for the classic Game Boy version because this is my uh, first experience with Tetris came via this. There have been better Tetris games. Tetris Effect was fantastic. And I really like Puyo Puyo Tetris. But this game, I must have wasted thousands of hours on it on my Game Boy. It, it's just a perfect video game, isn't it? It's it's endless, it, it requires skill to get better, and the music's amazing, and yeah, it, it's a great game. One of the best ever made, in my opinion. Perfect. Streets of Rage 2. 
potentially bettered by Streets of Rage 4, which I'm currently playing through after finally deciding to open my limited run version. I might regret that in a few years, but this is a great game. Um, the music in this game is probably more memorable to me than anything else. The gameplay is just fun, standard side-scrolling beat-em-up, you might say, but it's just got that that feel to it that you get from Sega with, with Golden Axe and Streets of Rage that I never felt from, from the likes of Final Fight and a few others. This was always my favourite. Um, and I think that this was the best of the original three on the Mega Drive. A great game, Streets of Rage 2. If ever there was a series overdue a return, you are looking at it right now. Power Stone on the Sega Dreamcast. Fantastic fighting game. Very different. Even now, there is not a lot like this. It was uh, based on a, a... The level design was basically isometric, and you ran around, and you had to try and find the crystals. You needed three to activate your super, which then allowed you to basically wail on the other guy and get loads of hits in. It was just pure fun. Power Stone 2, possibly a better game, because it had... Um, a lot more going on but the original is the one that I remember so fondly for the music and the characters and yeah Capcom really need to bring this back even if it's just a remaster I think it would do so well with an online mode Nights into Dreams for me potentially the best game on the Sega Saturn I might regret saying that because I can't remember if I put another one in on the list but it was the game that made me get a Saturn, I can say that much. Um, this was utterly stunning in 1996. And it was the first game that used the 3D controller on the Saturn, um, which really, really felt so good to play this game with. Um, it, it suited it perfectly, it just had this aura to it that you don't get from many other games. Great to look at, great gameplay great replayability as well trying to do better score so a great series that sadly hasn't really gone anywhere since Action. time crisis one of my favorite arcade games i know it came out on ps1 as well but um not the same for me the arcade version of time crisis is just absolutely classic the perfect feel when you step on your pedal to go down, you know, to, to lower down and raise back up. The feel of the G-Con, how it recoils and you feel every shot. It's just a, a perfect audio-visual experience from start to finish. And I can say this is a game I have finished in the arcade. Yes, it may have cost me about 300 pesetas or whatever the currency was at the time. Lira, was it, in Spain? I don't even remember. In Gran Canaria in 1998, I finished Time Crisis in the arcade. It probably cost my parents half their annual salary. Action. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the Sega Dreamcast. A spectacular game this. Um, I think it had 52 characters that you could select from. All very different. And it was just so packed full of content. You obviously had three player tag team battles. It was just one of them games that me and my mates could just play for hours and not get bored. And you just think now, that was such a simpler time. Like, you you just wouldn't do that now, I don't think. Um, or I wouldn't. It's weird to think. But yeah, this this was a fantastic game. One of the very best on the Dreamcast. Um, another series that's gone sadly downhill. I didn't think Marvel vs. Capcom 3 or Infinite were very good. This remains absolutely the best from that series. Sonic the Hedgehog, the original from the Sega Mega Drive. A game I've probably finished, I would hazard a guess, more than any other game ever made. Um, know it like back to front, who doesn't, you might say. And there's a reason for that, it's because it's pure fun from start to finish. The music, the gameplay, the length, you know, it's not a long game, you can finish it in an hour, hour and a half maybe. But everything about this is just classic. This, you know, however long the gaming medium lasts and evolves, this game will always be held up 
as a real inspiration for everything that comes after it. It's one of the very best. If you haven't played this, what on, what on earth are you, are you even doing? Uh, just make sure it happens. Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh my god, one of the best games ever made. Um, without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, I cannot, I cannot praise this game enough. Really, the the campaign in this, the storyline is spectacular. It looks stunning. The gameplay, it's standard Rockstar. It's it's not what it's famed for. It's not nothing special. But the game itself is just a work of art. It's one of the very best games you will ever play. I'm amazed I've put this at 58, but it's because it doesn't have any replayability. It's too long. It's like 80 hours long. But it's still fantastic. You must play this game. Ghost of Tsushima. One of the newer games on this list. And what a fantastic game it is. Um, one of the very best from 2020 for me. And I didn't have any expectations for this. I was seeing all the footage of it when it was you know, being shown at E3 and everything like that. And I was like, oh, Samurai's again. I don't really care. But... The gameplay in this is just perfect. The combat is so good. The story is great. It looks spectacular. For me, it was the game that stole The Last of Us 2's thunder. Uh, they came out at a similar time, as I recall, or at least the same year. And This was the better game. I loved it. Fantastic, and I can't wait for an inevitable sequel. Super Mario Kart 64. Great game. Um, I don't know how this is regarded by the real hardcore Mario Kart fans in terms of whether it's the best or not, but it is for me. Um, I think the gameplay has never been tighter, never been better. I think the levels are so memorable. It's got the perfect amount of characters without being overwhelming like I think the new ones have where they have every Tom, Dick and Harry you've ever heard of. Or not heard of. This was the classic Mario Kart experience to me, uh, and it felt great on the Mario Kart control uh, on the N64 controller. I love this game. Um, don't know how many hours I've spent on it in four players, but it's one of the, it's one of my very favourites. I could still play this now and have a great time without a doubt. Pro Evolution Soccer 3, as will be proven, with it being the highest football game on this list. This is my favourite football game of all time. Um, I don't know what makes it that. It's, whether it's just the fact that Pierluigi Colina was on the front cover looking incredibly intense or, or what, I don't know. But this just felt like the perfect um, version of Pez on the PS2 and obviously there were plenty. Me and my friend Nick probably played this for about 100 hours and that's no exaggeration. Um, we used to play 45 minute real time halves, so actual one and a half hour games. And time would just fly by. We'd never even consider it. Um, it's an outstanding game to this day. Awahida. Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. What a great game, what a fantastic game. Um, not my favorite Metal Gear. That's a bit of a spoiler, I suppose, for what's to come, but still fantastic. I've finished this so many times. It's just good fun. I remember from the moment the demo came with Zone of the Enders and you got to melt the ice and topple the cups and everything, and you just saw the level of detail and immersion that Kojima had put into this game. It just felt like a step forward, um, much like Metal Gear Solid 1 did in the first place. This is an outstanding game, one that everyone has to play. Uh, without a doubt, one of the greatest games ever made, in my opinion. Ooh. Toy Commander. So, going from what I've just said, that Metal Gear Solid 2 is one of the greatest games ever made, I've put Toy Commander above it. Interesting, you might think. Look, Toy Commander is not going to win any awards for being the greatest game ever made. However... This is one of the most fun games I've ever had on any system. The multiplayer mode, 
creating our own modes with hide and seek the single player campaign which is so creative it this was one of the greatest games on the dreamcast and no one ever mentions it um i would absolutely love to find out what the chances are of this ever getting a hd remaster probably nil absolutely zero but god i'd love it a great game play it Haunting, starring Polterguy. Again, a game that very few people ever mention. A game well overdue a return. In this, you play a Polterguy, a ghost who is trying to scare this family out of their house. And the way you do that is dive into pieces of furniture and basically make them come alive to, to scare them when they're in the room uh, and try and make them move. And you have to do that across various different houses. Um, I can't remember the reason. I think they like were well, the reason you died or something like that. You know, you're not just picking on them because you're evil. There, there is a reason. Um, such a creative game. I loved this. Uh, I never finished it. I'd like, I'd loved for it to be re-released or something along those lines to give me that chance. But it, it's just so original. You just don't see anything like this, and it's well overdue a return, in my opinion. Guitar Hero Three: Legends of Rock. This is a game that is very close to my heart, and I'm sure many people's, uh, maybe not necessarily this specific Guitar Hero, but this is the one for me. Um, and and it's quite ironic, really. One of the greatest moments I've ever had in gaming was when I got back from purchasing this with its wireless guitar, which was a huge upgrade. And When You Were Young by The Killers was the first song we played, and it just felt so good. and. The scary thing is now, 14 years later, that is a memory of when I was young. That's deep. Great game. Guitar Hero. It's a classic. Final Fantasy IX. I'm sure people are wondering, is there going to be a Final Fantasy in this or what? You've got 50 and you've not had one. Well... There's plenty on the periphery of the top 100, believe me, including the likes of Final Fantasy X, 15, which I also loved. But the first to reach in and get a place is Final Fantasy IX, which I will confess I did not properly play until two years ago on PlayStation 4 with its uh, remaster. I did have it on the PlayStation 1, but... I it came out very close to the end of the PS1 lifespan, and I just don't think I've made a lot of progress, but this is a fantastic game with a great story, lovely characters like Vivi, who we're seeing here, um, and one of the very best from the series for me, hugely underrated, make sure you play it. Batman Arkham Asylum. I could have arguably picked any of the Arkham games, because I love them all, although I think Arkham Knight was quite quite a long way the worst because of the Batmobile se uh, sections but Arkham Asylum is the one that really shocked me when it came out I had no expectations of this game at all but I found it fantastic from start to finish it's almost like a Metroidvania um, but third person and you know it it's just a great game it, it's a really really great game um, that stood the test of time in my opinion, when I replayed it recently on the PlayStation 4. You've got to play this game. It's absolutely fantastic. Mass Effect. The original Mass Effect, in fact, from the Xbox 360, which is where I did originally play it before migrating into the PlayStation 3 for Mass Effect 2. Uh, this is a game I absolutely adore. I um, I cannot wait to play the remastered version, which comes soon to uh, to the modern consoles. It's just it's just perfect. Um, Bioware at the top of its game, uh, a long step ahead of Knights of the Old Republic for me was Mass Effect, which you know shows in the rankings of, of the games. Memorable characters, great storyline, really good looking game at the time it released. Obviously, it, it looks quite dated now, but brilliant game and I can't wait to replay it Fallout 3 well 
if ever a game has blown me away upon its release, it's possibly this. For a lot of people it was maybe Oblivion, but I never really got into that. And I never actually got into Skyrim, and so don't wait for an Elder Scrolls game because there won't be one. Sorry. But Fallout 3, I've never felt, oh my god, this this world is massive as much as I did when the first time I stepped out into um, into Fallout 3's world. It's just spectacular. It feels huge because it is. The story was great. I remember the missions were so good. And yeah, Fallout 4 I also enjoyed, but that didn't have the shock value that this did at the time it released. A great game. Life is Strange 2. And again, I could have picked any of these. I almost slotted Life is Strange 1 in uh, further down the list. But for me, Life is Strange 2 was the very best of the series so far. I do hope it continues. Uh, I really loved the storyline and the relationship between the brothers. I, I think this is a spectacular series that not enough people played. I think a lot of people played the original but skipped out on Life is Strange 2. And that's a big mistake. This is really, really good stuff. Um, it builds and builds and builds. And I feel the last couple of episodes, particularly the last one and where it ends, were really, really well written. Great, great games, these. Check it out. Persona 4 Golden. The only Persona game on the list, in fact, the only Persona game I've really given much of a chance to. I played a bit of 5, but I didn't get into it. Um, the funny thing with Persona 4 Golden is it took me about 5 years to finish it since I bought it, in, in, across 3 different attempts. Not through falling out of love of it or anything, but just because it was on the Vita, I wasn't always in the mood for portable gaming. But um, I did finish it last year, and... I was delighted I did. This this is a fantastic game. The social aspects are great, how you interact with your classmates and everything like that. But the pure RPG turn-based uh, battling is also brilliant. Uh, a great series, and for me, from what I played of 5, superior to the latest entry. Two enemies left. Zombies. All zombies ate my neighbours, depending on where you're from love this game so much like I can't even tell you uh, I never finished it in fact because it gets ridiculously hard um, but I got close but yeah basically run around maps kill zombies and various other monsters um, and you have to rescue the humans once you've got them all you move on to the next level after you've exited through the exit door simple gameplay brilliant arcade style fun a game that needs to come back I do know that there is an attempt to bring a sort of reimagining of zombies back via Kickstarter. I only hope that it's successful. Silent Hill 2 on the PlayStation 2. Fantastic series, fantastic game. Uh, the best of the series for me. Uh, obviously there have been numerous other attempts, but I never feel that they've quite matched the original, in my opinion. Um, I say the original, I mean two. Um, it's, it's just it's just dripping in atmosphere from start to finish. Pyramid heads skulking the corridors and everything. And I yearn for this series to come back. I pray that it will. There's been rumours for ages. I don't know why I do though, because the, the thought of this maybe migrating into first person like PT, I don't even know if I'll manage with it, but Silent Hill 2, stunning game, a classic. Sonic 2, another game I've finished numerous times um, and, and never grow old of. I think the music in Sonic 2 is brilliant, I think the level design is great, I think it was a big step up from Sonic 1. Um, so colourful, so fast, so inventive. You know, there's a lot of revisionism, I think, with Sonic now. People always say, oh, it was always inferior to Mario, the Mario games are better. But Mario games, fantastic as well, but anyone who plays Sonic 2 and tells me this isn't a great game is, is talking absolute rubbish, I'm afraid. 
a perfect marriage of gameplay, music, and pace. That's the big thing here, the ability to just travel the levels at high speed. And um, yeah, a great game and a huge step up in quality from the original. Virtua Fighter on the Sega Mega Drive 32X. Obviously not really regarded as the greatest version of this, but that's what I had it on as a kid. Fantastic game. Felt so revolutionary having the 3D polygonal fighters on a home system. It was just such a step up having played things like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Not necessarily in gameplay, but visually just blew you away. And it was quite a deep game, you know, I learnt all the characters, Jackie, Akira, Jeffrey was a particular favourite with his crazy wrestling style. I, I've always enjoyed the Virtua Fighter games, but I think Virtua Fighter 1, just due to the time I had it, was my favourite. I really love this game. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order was one of the best Star Wars games ever made um, without question and such a huge step up in quality from what the output had been from EA up until that point um, I, I can't wait for a sequel I assume one is coming really good action adventure game with almost sort of from software style Dark Souls type combat and the way that you lose the kills you you know people respawn when you die and that type of thing but full of great star wars moments you know at at walkers darth vader it's all there wrapped in a great storyline and it's beautiful to look at resident evil 2 remake i could have put the first original version on here but the remake is just an incredible game in every way Beautiful to look at, respectful of the original, but so much better. You can't really deny that that's a fact. Uh, a game that induces dread, fear, and sheer panic when Mr. X is running at you. A fantastic way to show how remakes are done. And, and Resident Evil 3 that came out last year was just as good. I just think Resident Evil 2, including the original, just is just a better game than 3 brilliant and look at how good that is to look at even now uh, a generation ahead it still dwarfs pretty much every game that gets released fantastic game Halo 3 the only placing on my top 100 for Microsoft's premiere series Halo I have finished Halo 1 to 3 I did kind of fall away from the series at that point as I think a lot did uh, as Bungie began to step away but Halo 3 is a magnificent game um, finishing this in co-op on legendary difficulty is a great memory including the uh, epic battle with Guilty Spark um, slight sarcasm there but overall the game is just top tier entertainment bombastic action great to look at, great gameplay it had a superb online mode um, yeah a great fitting end to the original trilogy of Halo games. Roller Coaster Tycoon, and I've gone for the original with this, but you can really say Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 slash 2 is very similar, just um, I suppose more uh, types of ride etc available in the sequel, but uh, this, this these two games are just so special so so special the, the campaign mode is good fun in itself and that's where i really cut my cloth learning the game's mechanics and everything of course but once you really delve into sandbox mode and just start about creating the greatest theme park you can you can lose an entire day so quickly with roller coaster tycoon it's a magical game um that induces so much nostalgia in me it's one of the very first pc games i ever owned when we got our time PC. Terrible, terrible PC it was. But what a game. Tony Hawk's Underground. And I could have chosen any number of Tony Hawk's games to fill this list out with. And it would have almost been 10% Tony Hawk's. But I didn't want to do that. I thought, I'll just pick one. And 
I was tied really between sort of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, which was my f my favourite of the of the Pro Skater series, and Thug, Tony Hawk's Underground, which was actually I think my favourite of the Tony Hawk's games. I just loved the storyline that it built into it. Um, it felt like the game that the series was really at the height of its powers there. Um, Thug 2 was fun too, but the original Thug was just such a great game. And this series in general is fantastic. I was delighted to see it return uh, last year and, and hopefully it's got a long future. Super Mario World, and I'm sure anyone who's got this far might be thinking, finally, to see this game. Um, of course it was going to be in the list. It's one of the very best Mario games, one of the best games ever made. Um, it's an absolute joy to play from start to finish. It introduced Yoshi. It had so many great levels, so much nostalgia with the music. It's fantastic. It's 2D Mario at its absolute pinnacle, uh, in my opinion, anyway. And yeah, what, what can you say? This is the game that I sadly missed out on as a kid as I didn't have a Super Nintendo, but I actually finished Super Mario World for the first time only two years ago on the Nintendo Switch with the SNES Online service, but I'd played it many times prior. Superb game. Time Splitters. And again, maybe a surprise, but I'm not talking about Time Splitters 2 or Time Splitters Future Perfect. I'm talking about Time Splitters. The original, the PlayStation 2 launch game, at least in the UK. This is a game that I have so much fondness for, so many great memories of playing with my friend Nick. We absolutely demolished this game for hours and hours in multiplayer uh, in the level creator mode. But the single player is fantastic too, it's essentially just an A to B run uh, in single player. There's not a lot of subtlety to it, it's not a very intelligent game. But it's just great fun, great gameplay. At the time it was stunning to look at and it was the first dual stick FPS I'd ever played, so I remember the controls being really weird to get used to, but what a joy when you did. Bloodborne. I could probably talk about this game for five hours straight. I won't bore you with that. Instead, I'll condense my feelings into 40 to 50 seconds, but this is one of the greatest games I've ever played, without question. Uh, 33rd best, as it turns out, but it's just got everything. The atmosphere of Yarnum and all its surrounding locales is just beautiful. It's stunning to look at. I've never been so scared of a game, I would say. At certain points, um, it, it was just terrifying every step forward. The gameplay requires so much practice, but it's so rewarding. Every time you lose, you learn. The boss fights are epic. Stick with Bloodborne if, you, if you've failed before. It's great. Resident Evil. The original, and in my opinion, still the best. And I'm not talking the remake on the GameCube. I'm talking PlayStation 1, original, ter terrible B-movie um, uh, voice, voice work, Resident Evil. It's just a classic to me. It's the game that introduced the series it's the game that introduced me to survival horror and i have so many great memories of this i remember finishing it and how excited i was and proud of myself that i managed to stick with it and not walk away because i was so scared but yeah it's a great game and you know the remake's great as well but there's something about that original that i just love Lilat Wars, or Star Fox 64 as it is known overseas. For some reason they gave it that horrendous name in the UK, but uh, it's known for a couple of things. This was the game that gave us the Rumble Pack in the UK, which it came bundled with. But for putting that to the side, the gameplay of, of this was just next level to me. Uh, as I've said before, the N64 was my first home console from Nintendo that I ever had. I'd never had any knowledge of Star Fox or anything, but this game was just awesome. I loved it. I liked the way that uh, every adventure mode that you sort of went through, it, you had different paths and routes you could take that would have different levels on them. Very creative game. It was quite short, but I loved it. And I loved the first time I defeated Andros in the final boss battle. 
Super Smash Bros. Melee. The only Smash game I've ever really got into, and I have tried a couple of times since with Brawl and the latest one on the Switch, but when I got into this, did I get into it? Me and my mate Dan unlocked everything you can possibly get. Mr. Game and watched a lot, and we had a great time doing it. <clears throat> it's an unbelievable game. It's so addictive. The gameplay is fantastic. Um, it's very unique. There's nothing really like it. You know, there's been many attempts to mimic it with like PlayStation All Stars, Battle Royale, etc., but they just don't get close. It is one and of its own, the greatest of its type. A fantastic, fantastic game. And this was, for me, the best version of Smash. Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds. One of my favourite strategy games ever made. Um, a game I still love to, to play even now. Um, Instructions received. It's basically Age of Empires, but with a Star Wars overlay, so it's obviously immediately 50 times better. Um, the, the things you can do on this in terms of the base building, the units and everything are overwhelming. I've never been good at it. I don't think there's an occasion I've ever won when I've played with all my mates in a four-player match. It doesn't bother me. I tend to favour just building a lot of walls and making Changing things difficult. The intercept course. Which I don't really do either, but I have a good time doing it. Um, rule number one, of course, though. No air. Chrono Trigger. Another game that I didn't play on its original release, obviously it's from the Super Nintendo. Uh, I played it on the DS and that's where I indeed finished it. Um, a game that I think is arguably as good as any Final Fantasy. Um, I, I have no words I can give this in terms of praise that are, are good enough. This is absolutely superb. The storyline's great, time travel, going to different planets. The characters are great, uh, it's the perfect length, it doesn't outstay its welcome, the combat's different, it's not just the standard turn based. This is a brilliant game, um, it's a series that I think should come back, I know there was a sequel on the PS1 that I never played, um, I think this is well overdue from Square. Half-Life 2. Well. We're really getting to the nuts and bolts of the list when you get to a game as good as Half-Life 2, and it's only number 27. This is an outstanding game. Um, one of the best FPS ever made. And it, at the time, it was just the visual fidelity of it was next level, but the physics at the time just blew you away. With the gravity gun, the way you could pick things up and chuck them, and... You, what you did would make other things react in terms of weights and that type of thing. It was just an unbelievable experience and it still is a great game. I remember replaying it on the orange box on the Xbox 360 and it was still an, an outstanding game. I'd love to get back to it one day. Destiny 2. Well. A controversial pick, some might say, because Destiny 2 didn't enjoy the greatest of launches, and indeed the base Destiny 2 experience was actually quite underwhelming for the fans of Destiny 1. It didn't have the feature-rich um, campaign that we hoped for, or the additional uh, options and, and, and the things they did with Shade. I won't go into it, I'm about to talk about Shaders, you don't need that when I've got 50 seconds. This is still a great game. Whichever way, uh, pick it up. The package is brilliant. Crucible was great. The strikes were great. The raid was eventually great. And it was expanded upon brilliantly by the likes of Forsaken and now Beyond Light. Sonic 3. So close to being the best Sonic game on the Mega Drive, but there is one that will better it. However, this is one of my favourite games of all time, unquestionably. Another that I have to finish probably every year or two years, at least. Arguably the greatest soundtrack in a video game, if you me. I know a lot of people are shaking their head who are Final Fantasy VII fans right now, but this is just magical to me. Um, I still remember when I got it 
how how I just basically sat in front of my TV one whole uh, school holiday finishing this repeatedly, and and it's still a great game now. I, I love it so much. Um, one of the best 2D platformers ever made, in my opinion. Inside. Playdead's second game after Limbo, which came out I think in 2006, so it was 10 years between games. And for me, Inside is so much better than Limbo, which was a great game in itself. I've, it's not a long game, maybe three, four hours, but I've never been so surprised, I think, by a story that's not really told with words. And I'm pretty much spoiling the ending here with what you're seeing, but it's been long enough. This is an unbelievable game. Um, I think Playdead are a supremely talented studio and I can't wait for the next project. But I think in the meantime, if you've not played Inside, you just have to play it. It's almost unexplainable, um, which I imagine this video, as short as it is, probably shows. Fable. The original Fable on the original Xbox this, not Fable 2, which most people think is a million times better, which I strongly disagree with. Fable 1 on the original Xbox was one of my favourite role-playing games ever. Um, very simple, nothing really spectacular, it doesn't do anything better. It's just very solid in all areas at the time, it was very good looking, the gameplay was good, nice storyline, and good character customization in terms of the way you could get titles and that type of thing. Um, just a really fun, solid game that I often think I'd love to play again, and I've never got round to it. But I know they have re sort of remastered it with a Fable Anniversary Edition, so I might have to do that one day. In all my years as chief, I've never seen anything like. That's right. It's only made it to number twenty-two. Final Fantasy VII. It is one of my favourite games of all time. Um, it's the best Final Fantasy. I don't think that's in doubt. I, I'm not. I was tempted to put remake in here because I have played enough of it to make the call. This, you know, it's clearly better than the original. But I don't think that's fair until I have completed the game. But this is just outstanding. The music is. It, it's. It says a lot when the first thing I'm jumping to is the music. But that really is what evokes such memories with Final Fantasy 7 for me. The gameplay is pretty standard turn-based fair, it's nothing exceptional. It's just the world building, the characters, the music, the environments. All of that stuff is square at the peak of its powers. Championship manager or football manager. And I've not picked a year, any of them. Every year without fail, uh, I put probably 50 to 100 hours minimum into these games. Uh, it's the ultimate time sink. I'm never very good at it. Apart everyone remembers, I think, who's into Football Manager, their best saves. And for me, it was a Crystal Palace team I had on about FM 2008. Oh, what a team we had. And we won the lot repeatedly. But, you know, that's the thing. You just have stories with these games. You can lose yourself for weeks with them and achieve nothing. It's... Um, it's such a deep game. They put so much effort effort into them at Sports Interactive. and um, To the uninitiated, it doesn't look very fun. But trust me, it's very addictive. Geometry Wars Retro Evolved on the Xbox 360 is one of the games on this list that resonates most with me when I look back at the Xbox 360 without a doubt it, it defined me for a couple of years that was the game I used to play more than any other I'd put it on at any time of the day or night if I were bored uh, in hunt of the survived 1 million achievement which when I did ironically was on my, one of my best friends Dan's machine so I didn't even get the achievement I got it for him but I did then do it again. Uh, it's just one of those games that, if you're good at it, it, it's almost like Guitar Hero. You just have, you just get into this rhythm where everything you're looking at looks insane to everybody else, but to you, it's just perfect rhythm. 
The Walking Dead. Well, Telltale's The Walking Dead, even. Season 1. I love all the Walking Dead games. You know, there's been about five, I think, by this point. And I, I think they've ended them totally now, but they may come back. But the original series, which was the first real Telltale game following this format as well, felt so revolutionary that uh, the storytelling was unlike anything we'd really seen in games for such a long time. And some of the moments in it, you know, they're still so memorable even now. Uh, nine years later, unbelievably, with the likes of when Lee uh, gets shot by Clem, and it, it's just a fantastic game. The gameplay is nothing special. The engine's terrible, but the storyline is superb. Super Street Fighter Two, Super Nintendo 1993. I could have put Mega Drive, um, but I did actually play it on the Super Nintendo first at my cousin's house. But I owned it on the Mega Drive, but whatever you owned it on, we've all owned it a billion times since, of course. Street Fighter 2 is the best fighting game ever made. And that's, for me, unquestionable. And I don't... I'm not going to mince my words on that. I don't think anyone can really pick anything else as a candidate. The perfect balance of fighters, you can win with anyone if you're good enough. Um, the music's incredible and, and so nostalgic. The graphics and speed are still brilliant to this day. It's still a beautiful game. This is a perfect video game. Super Mario 64. <laughs> Just perfection. Utter perfection for a 3D platformer. Great gameplay. Great music. Um, long. Challenging. Just... Perfect. Absolutely perfect. A magical game. One of the very best uh, of its type. And I don't think it's ever been bettered, in, in my opinion. Which is why it's here. Above Mario Sunshine. Above Mario Galaxy. Above Mario Odyssey. Um, it's still, for me, the greatest 3D Mario game. By some considerable distance. And that could be nostalgia speaking, or it could just be because... It is. Mass Effect 2. The pinnacle of the Mass Effect series. The pinnacle of Bioware's output. And one of the greatest games ever made. Um, Mass Effect 3 was also fantastic. But for me, the second one was just next level. The characters, Legion who we're seeing now actually and uh, Shepard ev everyone has the moments um, set pieces are great storylines fantastic just a perfect perfect example of what a role playing game should be um, can only hope that whatever the return of Mass Effect is borrows heavily from this because this shows what this franchise is capable of GoldenEye 007. Another game I could talk about for hours and hours and hours. Probably not as long as my mate Jim, but still. I could talk about it a long time. Uh, I finished this... I don't even know how many times on uh, back in the day on the N64. More so the amount of time I spent in four-player deathmatch, on stack especially. It, it's just got the lot. This was such a step forward for um, FPS on, on console. It proved that they were possible. The analog stick worked great. Yes, the gameplay doesn't hold up now um, when, you, when you have a go on it, but everything about this is perfection. The music's great. The levels are great. It's um, one, of, one of the best games ever made for me. And if, if you take that from the moment that it came out, but even now I still love it. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Uh, I was so close to uh, having this even higher, actually, when I originally looked, looked at the list. Um, love this so much. It's a game I actually intend to play again this year because it's been at least three years since my last run through. It's so clever. Some of the stuff you do in this game is just insane. Um, 
You have to. Ki you can kill yourself to kill one of the bosses. So that he thinks you. I won't go into it. The f the boss fight with the end, where he's an old guy and you can you can kill him earlier if you. I could I could mention all these things and it makes no sense because I ain't got the time to talk about them. All I'll say is, this is a fantastic game and so inventive, so clever, brilliant boss fights. Um, maybe the most varied Metal Gear Solid game. You must play it. Sonic and Knuckles, the pinnacle of Sonic of the Sonic the Hedgehog series for me. Um, purely down to the levels, uh, the, the zones, the music. Um, the gameplay is still as great as it's ever been, but the 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 boss fights and the music are just unparalleled for me with the series. And this is a fantastic game. I could wax lyrical for hours and hours and hours. I won't bore you. You should have played the Sonic games by now. A lot of people, you know, sort of troll them and say that they're not as good as Mario, but you could put any Mario 2D Mario game up against Sonic and Knuckles. It's as good as any of them, and in my opinion, better. Counter-Strike Source. Could have put Counter-Strike 1.6 in here. I had just as good a time on that at, at certain points in my life, but CS Source was, for a long time, uh, me and my mate's game of choice. It it evokes such great memories for me. Some of the maps are just exceptional. The Dust, the Dust 2, Aztec, Office, Assault. You know, these are fantastic maps. Um, I've, I've never played CS uh, Go since. This was a time and a place game for me. And I almost don't want to revisit it. It was a game that needed such skill. You learnt by doing. Um, again, and by dying and being rubbish, you learnt. But what a game. Absolutely love it. The Last of Us. I've surprised myself that this is only number 11 for me. Um, because this is unquestionably one of my favourite ever games. I mean, number 11 is still spectacular, but it really speaks to the the quality of what comes after it for me and the love I have for those games but putting that to the side Joel and Ellie's adventure here is just a superb example of what's possible from the medium and um, the story is just next level I don't think The Last of Us 2 is as good and that's why this one makes the cut and that doesn't I still enjoyed Last of Us 2 but I don't necessarily like what they did with Joel but this is a must play game I think everyone owes it to themselves. Sony, Xbox, whatever platform of choice you have, you must play The Last of Us. It's a superb game. And we reach the top 10. And the first game, Destiny. A game I probably put about 500 hours into, I'm ashamed to say on the PlayStation 4 and I was not prepared for how much I would love this game when it came out. One of the most fantastic experiences I've had on a console. You can't beat things like the Vault of Glass, Crota's End, the way raids were finally brought to a console setting um, really made it for me. That th There were some fantastic moments acting as a, a team of six guardians doing the raids it was brilliant. A beautiful game, full of content. Love what they did with the Taken King as well. Stunning. Number 9 is Castlevania Symphony of the Night on the PlayStation 1. Also available I think on the Sega Saturn but maybe only in Japan I think. Um, this game is actually perfection. I think it's flawless. It's beautiful to look at. The, um, the sound is fantastic, the soundtrack, like a jazz score. And then of course, the amazing twist where you think you've finished the game. And then the castle map that you've been work walking around for the last 15 hours or so inverts upon itself. And you realise you can then play the game essentially again, back 
backwards. And the way that it was designed with that in mind is just incredible. The gameplay is brilliant. It's, it's just, it's flawless. Please, please play Castlevania. Star Wars Galaxies is the only MMO, if we discount the likes of Destiny, that's ever really got its hooks into me. And I've tried with others since to replicate that initial high that Galaxies gave me, but nothing gets close. If you're someone who played this game at its peak, at its height, then you know exactly what I mean. It's unlike any other MMO. The sandbox elements, the ability to, uh, you know, with player housing, and professions like being a politician or a mayor, creating your own city. Uh, there were 32 professions within the game, all very distinct, all very different. It had an amazing faction alignment, obviously with Imperials and Rebels and the PvP was excellent. It, it, it's just... Uh, I miss this game so badly. I don't know what else to say. Bring it back! This was always going to make the top 10. I think when I first set out with this, I thought of a few games initially off the top of my head that would be at the top echelons of the list, and Bioshock was one of the first I thought of. It's rare that a game that gets ported to various platforms now, I will just replay straight off the bat each time. I did it on Xbox 360 initially, then I played it on PlayStation 3, and then I played it on PlayStation 4, and then I played it on Nintendo Switch. And for a game to get that many playthroughs, not a short game per se, in such a short space of time, says an awful lot and that it speaks to the quality that this has i would hope that everyone has played this at this point but if you if if you somehow missed by bioshock rectify that immediately pokemon red and blue the year this came out was pokemon central in, in the UK, so we had the Pokemon cards, we had the cartoon, the lot, and, and the game really got its hooks into, I can think especially me and my, my friend Dan, um, over the course of one summer we just did everything we could to collect all the Pokemon and fill our Pokedex, which I remember very well doing in uh, in my bedroom, and we'd, we'd read that you got some sort of prize or accolade for completing it turned out it was just some bullshit diploma within the game that said well done but it's memories like that that make this game it it's just baby's first rpg some might say but it's got a lot more to it than that the characters the towns the music it's it's all just perfect the best game boy game ever made unreal tournament was for about three years, I would say, the main game I played. Um, it's the game I would say I've, I was best at, and that makes a big difference. It's the first time, and probably the last time, I've ever been good at a game, and that feeling of going onto a server just knowing you're going to come first, it's unparalleled, really. Um, I was in the UK team for Capture the Flag, and yeah, it's the gameplay was just perfect, and um, the weapons were fantastic, the maps were unbelievable, including the likes of the classic Deck 16, Facing Worlds, and um, you, you know, Lava Giant. There are so many, you could, you could list them all night. Uh, fantastic game, uh, one of the best first person shooters of all time, and, and for me, my favourite ever made. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. The game I've most been surprised by in the recent few years. So I did get this at launch and I, and I tried playing it because obviously the reviews were fantastic and, and I just couldn't get into it. And then in the middle of lockdown uh, in 2020, I did go back to it because obviously more time on my hands. And I had no idea where I went wrong before, but this game blew me away and ended up 
finishing it, finishing all the DLC, which is bigger than most games. It's it's just exceptional. It's perfection. If you've attempted this and never quite seen the big deal, you you really need to try again. Everything about The Witcher is perfection. Um, I cannot wait for what CD Projekt do next with this universe. Hopefully, it's better than Cyberpunk. Metal Gear Solid. I could have put any of the first four MGSs this high in this list because they all mean that much to me. Um, but the original is the classic and it's the greatest in my opinion. It's the shortest. You can finish it in two hours. But the impact this had when it was released and how different it was to anything else, how cinematic and adult it was, it was unlike anything we'd ever seen before on the PlayStation 1 and I think it set a new standard for video games which you know are still I think games now even still hark back to this and that says a lot the boss fights the music the creativity the way Kojima used such strange uh, methods to convey the story uh, with the likes of Psycho Mantis and everything else it, it's it's an unbelievable game, a must play for everybody Shenmue 2 anyone who knows me knows my favourite game of all time is Shenmue and I did um and ah, I have to be honest of a weather 2 just put number one as Shenmue 1 and 2 or to actually separate them out and as it turns out I did separate them Shenmue 2 I have put as second purely because I feel Shenmue 1 is more memorable to me in that I replay it more often but this game is fantastic the the level of depth and the world building is just insane um, it was unlike anything we'd seen before at the time um, the likes of Kowloon and Wanzai and all these different locations are just so well realised and I, I think people dump on Shenmue because it, it was so over budget and didn't sell well but anyone who really played these games will see the quality that they have and that leads us to number one as I mentioned which is the original Shenmue on the Sega Dreamcast Oh. It's a game that means so much to me. Um, I don't know how many times I've finished this. It's, and it never gets boring. And every single time I try to eke out everything I can from the game. Whether that's trying to collect all the uh, all the gacha toys, get all the high scores in the arcade machines. You know, just every little thing extra I can to try and give it a bit more longevity. The story of Rio is first rate. And it it's really un impossible even I would say for anyone modern to return to Shenmue and be impressed by it you had to be there at the time you had to experience how much of a step forward this was for video games um, it was unlike anything we'd seen before the ambition was unparalleled and for me I don't think it'll ever not be my number one 